This is Trust Your Magic, the podcast. I am Kristen V. Carter, your host, and I'm super excited to be here. As you already know, Trust Your Magic podcast is all about me interviewing and talking with people who have inspired me to trust my magic because they trust theirs. And today I'm here with two of my closest friends. You know, it's always challenging to build friendships and relationships. And we have had the honor and the privilege of getting to know one another and being close friends. And in this world of COVID, I've been able to get to know these two lovely ladies who I love immensely. So I want to introduce my friends, worldwide educator, international superstar, Adrian Waller, and Brooklyn native, army vet, all those things, human resources administrator, Tiffany Kelly. Hey, ladies. What up, though? Hey. (laughs) Did you like my intro? (laughs) Oh, man. How's it going? How's it doing? Good, good. Good, good. You know we good. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Well, I'm really excited to be here. So just so you guys know at home, the way that Adrian and Tiff and I met, we actually met over Clubhouse, you know, that virtual app that was really popular in 2020. We met on a room called B-Sides, which is a music room. And so I just want to get into how we met, how we were able to connect and all of that, and we could get going. So um, tell me, ladies. So as I already said, we met at the top of 2021. Actually, Adrian, I think I heard your voice in 2020, but we connected in 2021. Where were you at that point of your life in COVID? You want to go first, Tiff, or you want me to uh, start us off? Um, well, I, I, I guess you can start because you were introduced to B-Sides first, to Kristen first, and then I came in after <laughs> <laughs> So in terms of COVID, so when COVID first was announced to the world, I was actually working in China. And I think that's really important information because that kind of changed my life, really. And I was traveling and I was visiting my cousin in Australia. And I remember sitting on the couch and we were like, wait, what? What's going on? And I say that because you're that then I lost that job. So I ended up taking a job because I didn't trust my magic and ended up in Kuwait. And I was really unhappy. So like when I was on B-Sides, um, it was really an escape for me from the reality of what I was doing. I was really actually supposed to be at work because of the time difference. The room was starting when I was walking into work. And it became this thing I look forward to Wednesday mornings to kind of like have in my ear. So when people were walking by, they didn't know what was going on. And like I had a coworker, her hours changed and we shared the office. I was kind of mad because now I couldn't just be in B sides. You know, I felt like somebody was intruding in my spot. So where I was physically, I was in Kuwait. Where I was mentally was really a tough place because I had lost a job that I really wanted took a job I didn't want in a country I wasn't excited about doing things that were like, I'm not going to say beneath me, but it was a place where I was like, that's where I was, not where I want to go. And it didn't feel right. And so all of that was happening while I'm discovering Clubhouse and B-Side. So that's kind of where I was at that point in my life. Okay. Okay. And then for you, Tiff, you joined us a few a few months later. So we'll get into it. So Adrian, when I first heard your voice, I think it was December, 2020, we were in a relationship room and then we started B-Sides at the end of 2020, but kind of got popular. I want to say top of 2021. So when you popped in, were you just kind of like, oh, they're playing music or were, or had you already made the connection that like, I was the same person from that relationship room? Oh, I was following you. I was clubhouse oh. talking. <laughs> I was like, oh, this person seems cool. What room is she in? And so there were a few rooms that, and there were two Kristens. And so I would get the two of you all confused for a little while, but I like both of y'all, but y'all were different. So if I saw a Kristen in a room, I was like, oh, what's going on here? And then something about it was just magnetic. I was like, this is really cool. Like I get to tell you what I think about music. I love music. I can't tell you who's seeing nothing, but this one, I can tell you what I think. And people were arguing and, you know, I kind of like the, like the spiciness, like, no, don't vote for this. Or how could you think that? I really like the banter between you and Skylar. So like, it was you who I was like, hmm, what is she doing? Hmm. Oh, (laughs) this is a lot of fun. (laughs) That's hilarious. So just to back up for a second. So for those of you who don't know B-Sides, and you can join us on Clubhouse, but for those of you who don't know about B-Sides, basically it's a weekly music room where we do music battles. So we have two opponents. One person 
creates a playlist, another person creates a playlist, and we have a theme for the week. So for example, let's say it's like best of the 90s. We had 90s versus 2000s when I met Adrian. And so I would play a song, my opponent would play a song, shout out to Skylar O'Neill, and then our room would have the opportunity to vote. So Adrian was part of that early, you know, early portion of B-Sides where we were, we didn't know one another, we just knew voices, we hadn't yet become friends, we weren't doing Zooms just yet, but we were just like hearing voices. And so we had a game night, and the day after the game night, Tiff joined <laughs> and because her audio is always impeccable. I know her audio is impeccable here too. But Tiff, what attracted you to the room? <laughs> you know what? It kind of goes back to what Adrian was saying. It, I followed someone into the room, Tristan. And we were part of this room that my cousin was, my cousin Jordan, that, that you work with BET, that she used to do. And then um, I followed him into. Um, into our room now and I'm like I just couldn't believe it but at the time I wasn't really looking for anything because I was already I think I've been on Clubhouse since October 2020 and then I was already involved with the um definitely still the music but I was like into like the Broadway stuff mm -hmm. so I was like behind the scenes of like the Lion King I was doing a little helping them market their their thing and then I was doing um then I did, I was like the PTR for um, the Wiz um, that was on um, Clubhouse. And then, then you know, it kind of like got kind of sparse. And, you know, it was like a lot of rooms where people were arguing and stuff like that. And I was just like, I did not want to get involved in none of that. You know, you just pop in, listen in, and it's like, oh, this is like too messy. Then you pop out. Then I, I was just looking for something where I wanted to find um, a community. Yeah. While I was on, you know, while, while we're stuck in the house, I just wanted a community. Um, then after The Bachelor went off, of course, I was like, all right. So I followed Tristan and I was like, oh, this is a music room. Of course. Eric, who doesn't love music? I need to find that one person that doesn't love music. So I was like, all right, let me go up in here. And I was like, oh, I could go up on stage and talk. Crap. With these loud JBLs, okay. And then um, I just loved it. Like as soon as I got in the room, I think it was like May, 2021. Um, but I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed everybody's persona and their character. Like everybody was different. It's almost like being in high school where everybody um, fit into different categories, but everyone is at the cool table. Your first night, you started going around the stage and saying, I love you because of this. I love you because of that. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? We love her. Wait, again, how is she speaking over us? Because we're like trying to get our music together. And you would and we'd be like, well, we can't talk. So <laughs> <laughs> she was so crystal clear. I was like. What kind of microphone does she have? Like, is she, yeah. is she have a partnership with Clubhouse? Why is her audio better than ever? It's like 15 people on stage. Tips is Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I just had some I just had some JBLs. I just had some JBLs and then ever since then everybody's has been dubbing me as, you know, that's like my little code. You know, everybody has a code name now, so I'm I'm JBL. So you know, I mean, shout shout out to my husband Terrence. Love you, baby. <laughs> Talk about some product placement. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's an audio specialist at JBL, so you know, he hooked it up. So yeah, so that's how I got there. That that's where I was, and that and that's how I got to um to B sides, and that's how I got to meet everybody. But then, you know, as time went on, I felt more of a connection. You know, to you, Kristen, and Adrian. I was going to only add that by the time Tiff joined, I was back in the U.S. and I was also in a different headspace. So also, that's kind of interesting because like by the time she got there, I know I physically and mentally had started to make some shifts about like trusting my magic, what I was, where I was. So I just wanted to put that out there because this is the first time I think I consciously thought about it like that because that Zoom that we did, that game night was like one of my first things that I did back on U.S. soil. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, we'll get into that. So, you know, there are a sea of voices that we all heard for months. And then you start to think like, oh, I want to get to know this person. Now, I remember the exact moment for myself when I said that about Adrian. And Tiff was falling in, to your point, Adrian, Tiff was falling in when we were figuring out who each other were. So just to back up for folks that are listening and watching, besides we only heard our voices and then we decided in the spring of 2021, we were going to do a Zoom. When we did that Zoom, we were on for about six hours. We played games, we talked, folks were exchanging information. And then the very next B-Sides night we had, Tiff joined and all of that energy of us connecting putting our faces to names, becoming human. Like it went from voices to like, oh, these are actual people. <laughs> That's when she joined. So when did you all start to really kind of put faces to names and say like, oh, I think she's cool. Cause I know the moment for both of you too. So I'm curious to know what you all would say about that. Oh, um, well for me, it didn't, um, it didn't really take that long. It probably took about like a couple of months, maybe. What is it? I came in in May. Um, maybe so during that summer, uh, like July-ish, August, and I was like, all right, yeah, these are my girls. <laughs> They're consistent. <laughs> I was like, um, yeah, it, it, def it definitely didn't take that long, especially since I think during that time, I think we had, we were doing the, uh, the, uh, regional battles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That I, I think, I think doing that and then, you know, it was like a continuous thing every, every week. So I think because of that consistency and I was like, all right, I, I mean, and you could just pretty much just like pinpoint um, listening to people and dealing with them every week. Like, all right, I know I could chill with this person outside of B-sides, yeah. you know, so it probably took me about like, it didn't take that long. It probably took like less than two months. Okay. Then, probably some weeks. And then for you, Adrian? <laughs> Um, for you, it was interesting because I think it was the moment when I started claiming myself as Team Kristen in the 90s versus 2000s battle. Whenever I decided, I'm really not voting for Skylar, I'm <laughs> voting for Kristen. Like, whenever that was, and, and it wasn't just that, but you know, like whenever it became like where I could say, I'm voting for the home team, I knew I wanted to connect with you. Like, because I stopped even saying Kristen, I was like, home team. Like, you know, like that was like my answer, particularly because people started walking into my office and stuff like that. So like, I'm looking for the home team. Um, so whenever that happened, I can't tell you an exact. It was probably because I think I started in 90, the 94 is when I started was like consistently because I might have gone to one before. But the one where I was like, oh, I'm coming every week was 94. And so. I would say at the latest, it was by 98. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, I'm, I'm down. That like, who, who is this person? And then you had somewhere around then started talking about this game night. And I remember being on Instagram like, yep. whenever you do this, please don't forget me. I want to be there. Here, but yeah. me, me, this one, don't forget. I want to be there. I felt a little stalkerish because I think I sent that message like three times like, so is it Zoom happening? If so, did I miss it? Like, you know. Yep. That's exactly what for me, I started to say, oh, I want to get to know Adrian. I appreciated that you reached out that many times. And also it's very similar to me. When I want to introduce myself to people or whatever, I always make sure like, hey, I want to be clear and intentional. I want to connect with you. So I remember having like written your name down. And again, at the time it was like screen names versus real names. Okay, where's everybody time zone? understanding that you had come from, you know, overseas and then you had just come back to Detroit. Like I was starting to put those pieces together in a way that months prior, you know, you're not thinking about it originally. And then you mm -hmm. start to like connect the dots for people. So yeah, I definitely remember that. And, and Tiff, yeah, by the time you came along, I think we were already solidifying ourselves as a family. So you felt like, honestly, you got in right before the cutoff. If I'm being real, <laughs> <laughs> literally, like, oh, I've heard, <laughs> literally, 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 right before the cutoff. And I remember talking to uh, to um, Kristen about it. I was like, "It just seemed cool. Like she good, but had yeah. she come a little bit later, I think me and Kristen had a couple of conversations. Like she better be happy because we were still in that surge <laughs> of excitement." 
<laughs> like not to actually better be happy, but like I, at yeah, that I time, it. that's kind of how I felt. I was like, yeah. By the time we did the game night, that was when we started all exchanging information. We had asked each other for contacts, but Adrian and I had already been talking because she had reached out to me on IG. So yeah, no, that's just cool to even take a look at how the friendship started to formalized then. Uh, So I just want to shift some gears just in terms of the fact that all three of us have spent significant time away from home. And so even in coming up with the theme for today and friendships over 35 and all of that, that's something that's always been significant to me, how I created friendships through the years. I was always very, very intentional, which I'll get into. But first, Tiff, I want to know how old were you when you signed up for the army? I was actually um, 17. Mm -hmm. I was in, um, I wasn't 18 yet. So my father had to, like, once I signed up, then my father had to kind of give his permission to say I could sign up. And then, like, as soon as I graduated and I was going to be shipped shipped off, um, because I knew that he couldn't pay for me to go to school. I had got accepted into, like, um, I wanted to go to Johnson C. Wells, the HBCU. I had got I had got I had got accepted to Johnson C. Wells, but their um the scholarship that they gave me wasn't enough and I didn't want to I didn't want to get any student loans. So my father used to be in the Air Force, so he was like, Why don't you, you know, do the military for a couple of years? And I was like, I gotta do that, you know, I can do that. So basically I signed up when I was 17, like right after I completed like taking my SATs and my ACTs and all that other stuff. Um, and right after I got accepted into John C. C. Wells, um, I signed up. Um, okay. And yeah, then, so I was pretty young. Yeah. And so you were 17. Were you traveling abroad? Like, I have no idea what it means to be in the army at that young age. So, like, <laughs> what was going on during that period of life? What were you thinking at that time? And were you traveling a lot? Well, um, I definitely, it is definitely, for me, it's scary, but it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. It was scary because it's just a new environment. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was used to moving around. Like, yeah, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, but I actually entered the military in Miami. I moved to Miami with my dad mm-hmm. when I was, um, when I uh, got into high school. So I was accustomed to moving around. And so I wasn't really... I, I was very fond of traveling. Um, it's just that it was just like a new environment. I didn't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know if like, how was I going to fit in or if I was going to fail because this is something more, it's more physical. Um, even though I've, you know, I ran track, played basketball. I was very active in high school. Um, but it was just like, it, it was just, it's just a different feeling. But once I joined, um, and got to travel. The travel part was the easy part. I was trying to get overseas. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to stay in the States. Like my first duty station was in Indianapolis in Indiana. Um, and then I went from there to El Paso, Texas for Bliss. Um, and then from there, I went to Korea and I lived a year in Korea, uh, which I loved. So, um, oh yeah, shout out to uh, Korea. Anybody that need to take a trip, head over to Seoul. Uh, it's a great place. I came back to the States. I winded up in Missouri, Ugh. <laughs> Fort Leonardwood. Um, That was an experience. Ugh. That was an experience. So that was like my first duty station outside of active duty. Um, and then after that, you know, things started to happen like 9-11. I winded up in Egypt. Then I wanted to come back to New York. Then I wanted up in, in um, Kuwait doing OIF, OEF. So it was just um, basically... I enjoy traveling. I had I had no problems moving from places to place. It was just that you didn't know what to expect. Um, you didn't know how your family would deal with it. Um, that's probably like the hardest part because at the time I had my daughter, so it, it was just a lot of uh, outside. I would say inside variables, internal variables that I was really worried about. I wasn't really worried about um, being introduced to a new country or a new place or new people. Yeah. Did you ever feel, were you ever nervous about going to war? Um, yes. Hell yeah. Um, (laughs) I don't think, I don't think that place, I don't think that place is for, um, anybody. I was, um, 
it, it was a very um difficult at the time um because I, I think i was i was in my 20s it was right after 9 11 so we didn't know what to expect and then i was a part of a medical brigade um with a general so and then he was traveling and we had like hospitals everywhere all over the middle east and it was just like and then i was like one of the young um one of the young sergeants so sometimes they use me for qrf which is like his his bodyguard <laughs> so it was it, it's just it i mean it's just scary all around like it, especially when it's a like a war it wasn't like me going to korea when i was just chilling or egypt when i was just telling it's just like your personality to be like yes travel we and i'm like but aren't you afraid of war <laughs> the travel is great i mean it's a you know it's a free it's a free trip it's a free trip and i want and you know and you want and I mean, you don't just stay there. I mean, you can go to other countries. Like, I, you know, I've been to other countries. I've been to London, France. I've been to all of these other countries. Um, but, yeah, during that particular time, that OEF, OIF, uh, after 9-11, yeah, that was kind of, um, that was more of on the dangerous side. Um, I'm glad I got past that. Um, lost a couple of people, but um, I made it over. So, yeah. Well, praise God for that. Um, so, Adrian, I'm going to switch gears to you because you also have spent a number of years traveling abroad. So tell us, you know, when was the first time that you traveled? Traveled? I couldn't tell you because my mom is not from Michigan. So like this, like living away from home thing, much like what Tiff was saying, which is part of like my DNA as a kid. But I know my first international flight was at five when my mom decided we were going to move to Germany. And so I think that by the time I became an adult and even thought about it, <clears throat> there was always, there was already a groundwork for like, this is acceptable. This is okay. This is not even abnormal. This is something people do. Cause even when we didn't live abroad because she worked for the army, she was in all these different places. So she went to Saudi Arabia on travel more than once, you know? Um, so in my mind, I think, the fears that people have about it, I think my mom very early kind of just wiped that out of even being in my mind in terms of the fear of travel. And like we were always in a car. My dad's family was from Texas. My mom was from the D.C. area. So every holiday we're in a car driving because we were not the family to be flying nowhere. You know, like we drove everywhere. So like I think being away from family was something that. I just knew as like a reality, not as like something that was odd. It wasn't until later I met people like, wow. And I'm like, wait, that's not normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's interesting just hearing both of you speak. So just a little bit of background about myself. I'm originally from North New Jersey and I went to 10 different elementary schools. So my mom and I moved around quite a bit for a couple of reasons, but also she was looking for a school that would challenge me because I had started school early, I had skipped third grade, and she was really looking for some options. So I ended up changing schools quite a bit and having to learn how to make friends. Well, I had a system, but I learned how to make friends over and over. And I didn't travel internationally until I was in high school. So I went to a boarding high school, stayed in that one school for five years, eighth through 12th grade. And I studied abroad between my sophomore and junior years and hated it. I missed being home. I felt like culturally there was such a big difference. They called, <laughs> we, I was in Spain. And so we had a group that came, it was all of these uh, students from boarding schools and independent schools and things like that. And the Spaniards would call our group stupid Americans. And I think it was because most of the group wanted a party and I was there really trying to perfect my Spanish. And it's funny because most of what I did was teach my sister, my study abroad sister, Spanish, not Spanish, excuse me. I taught her how to play Uno. I went running. I would go get ice cream. Like that was basically all I did. So I really didn't feel at home. So it's interesting to hear like you guys just talk about traveling so fondly because for me, I think I've always kind of looked for familiarity you know, in any place that I've gone. Um, so it's just interesting to hear the differences in that, even in now me wanting to travel internationally with you all, 
and how long I didn't travel because I had those fears and I felt like I didn't fit in and, and things like that. So, you know, thank you for sharing about your experiences. So uh, when you went away, when both of you all went away as adults, because I know you guys have traveled a lot, uh, when you went away, did you ever worry about your friendships and relationships? Did you fear they would change? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Especially because when you start talking to people, particularly like educators, like the common thing you hear is like, oh, you're going to lose your friends. Oh, you know, people people are going to see that you're, they're going to say you're different and then they're not going to, you know, rock with you anymore. And I really push like now to this day, I push back on that narrative because I really feel like that's a choice of how you decide to be and interact with people when you decide to leave. I don't think that it's fully just the responsibility of the people who left. Like one thing I always told myself is I chose to leave the United States. I chose to be a 14 hour flight, you know, eight time, 12 time zones away. Like that's a decision I made. I always thought I have a responsibility to nurture and keep those relationships since I chose to leave. Like they didn't choose that. If anything, they begged me not to go or to stay, or they would say, you know, encourage like Adrian, whatever you want, what's going to make you happy. But I made that choice. So that meant I had to do something if I wanted to foster and keep those relationships going. So before the pandemic, to be honest, as somebody living abroad, COVID was a blessing because now people got used to communicating with people who weren't down the street and just meeting up for lunch. So that was really actually really helpful for me. But before that, when I looked at my phone, I had every app you can think of. I had Skype, Viber. I had I didn't even have an <laughs> Apple um, phone, but I had FaceTime. I had group me. I had literally. And so when people would say, well, how do I connect? I said, pick one. I got WhatsApp. I Whatever you need. Google me. Google Duo. What is it that you want? I, I have it, you know, and I, I, I was willing to meet people where they were. I was willing to schedule time to meet them. And then I also um, people knew I was on a cycle. I always came home every summer. And so I would also make time to see people in the summer, even if it was like a group of people like, hey, I'm going to dinner here. And it's like five or six or six of us got together. But people started to know my schedule. And so the people who I nurture those relationships with every about April, May, I start getting the messages. When do you get back? Did you book your flight? How long are you in Michigan? Are you going to D.C.? Like so that became like my practice, my habitual way that I did it. But. I, the biggest thing to me was I knew that I had to be an active role player in talking about it. And the other thing that I know that I really do is people think my life is what they see on Instagram when people travel. Mm -hmm. I try to make Mm -hmm. sure you know that my life is a life. Like I still struggle to meet people. I still struggle to date. I still get frustrated at work. (laughs) I still get tired. I still am on a weight loss plan. Like all of those things that are normal. I would talk Mm -hmm. to my friends about, I didn't just talk about the great trips that I took because that's really easy. And it's a way to put some distance there. Like if they wanted to know, like sometimes they would call like, oh, where are you now, Adrian? Oh, you're in Thailand this time. Oh, you're in this place, like that. But like in our regular chats, I would talk about my goals, my dreams, what I wanted to do, how I was trying to get there. The coworker who got in my way of what I was doing. Like I, I talked about the things that were still very human and I still do that to this day. Like. Tiff and I, before the recording started, I was talking about my, you know, where I'm operating with dating and what that feels oh. like and how that's <laughs> going. So like, I st- I didn't stop being who I really was before I left, but I have become a different person. But just because you grow and change doesn't mean the people you love and you're close to can't grow and change with you. And I think that if you believe that like you can keep those relationships, you will. And if you decide that you can't, you won't. Yeah. Yeah. And what about you, Tiff? Did you worry about your friendships and relationships and how they would be affected? Um, Definitely. Um, Just even going further back before there was the Internet. Remember, it was kind of hard to keep in contact with people um, without Facebook or MySpace or Black Planet. Right. (laughs) If I had a Black Planet account, because I used to love love my Black Planet account, but um, it was it's kind of hard to um to like Adrian said uh, maintain and foster those relationships when you didn't have anything um 
besides the phone kind of holding you back. It's kind of hard. It was kind of harder to maintain a phone or a cell phone back in those back in those ancient times <laughs> in the 1900s, right? <laughs> in the late 1900s. That's what they call it, the late 1900s. <laughs> That's so funny. The first time I it's heard that, truth, I died. But it's the truth. I know. It's the truth. In the late 1900s. It's kind, it was kind of hard to maintain that. So then by the time you actually were able to find the person, it's like you kind of like, you didn't outgrow, I mean, you didn't outgrow them. You just... um matured right right you just got older um but then it, it kind of goes back I, I seen something on the internet the other day and it, it kind of says something to the fact where um relationship like uh something about relationships and the length of time like it, even if you spend so much time away from it is really based on it's not the length it's the strength mm -hmm. so you could be in there you can have a relationship and force a relationship that's like 20 years ago and even though you haven't talked to that person in a long time just the strength of that the strength or the foundation of that will probably hold it up even 25 50 years later if even if you don't see each other in like a long time um but then you could have like those two we relationships that you know that that's probably stronger than that 20 year relationship yeah so mm -hmm. You know, um, it, it, it I, I, for me, it was def, you know, it's just, it's just a different thing when I, we didn't have that technology. I think it's much easier now since everybody has a phone. So there, you know, the excuse would be that you just didn't want to connect with me, right. Right. which is cool, but it's also reciprocity. People don't think that, um, you know, like, why didn't you call me? I can't stand when people do that. Don't come to me and be like, oh, why you ain't calling me? I'm like, well, why you ain't calling me? Like, it goes both ways. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you really wanted to put in the time, like, you will also, you know, make the time to call me too. Don't think it's always going to be on me. Yeah, for sure. There are two different things that I'm thinking about. One is my transition to boarding school. So I was 12 years old when I went away to Groton School in Massachusetts. And the one thing I didn't want, well, I just wanted to make sure that my friendship stayed intact. So shout out to Sabrine. I have been best friends with her since I was six years old. But I had a number of relationships change and didn't make it. You know, we had a we had a trifecta. We had what was known as the triangle. So we had another friend and that friendship didn't last, you know, beyond the high school years. And I remember how painful that was. And I also remember I have a friend. His name is Rob. You guys know him. Uh, Rob was just entering our friend circle in Jersey. And he stayed in touch with me. And I was always super surprised. Like, oh, my gosh, like this guy who's just getting used to hanging out with our friend circle, he reached out all the time. He would be on Instant Messenger. And it's funny now that we're older, he would be like, Kristen, I didn't even realize all that you were going through at boarding school. I just knew I wanted to make sure we stayed connected. So it's funny how that relationship, no matter how you grow and change and the conversations you need to have, like that's somebody that's still my friend. So that was the high school years. And then another transition was actually going from college, I'll say going from Jersey to LA. So in the top of 2011, I made the decision to come to LA. And I was, I don't even, at that time I wasn't worried. What I found was like, people were either moving changing jobs, getting married, like there were huge transitions for everybody. And I wanted to be very intentional about the friendships that I kept knowing that some people will make the excuse, because I do think it's an excuse that they're busy and things like that. But I think you make time for what you want to make time for. So you sure you can't be there every day. That's not what I'm saying, but you can still make time. So those are the two moments where I felt like were really, really crucial for me in terms of being able to cultivate friendships, no matter how far I was. Um, so just switching, just kind of switching um, themes, you know, all of us are in different industries and I would say like different parts of our journeys. And I always think that the reason that we're so close has a lot to do with the fact that we like at the core have a lot of similar values. And so I wanted to just know how you feel we've been able to be close despite the fact of time zone, distance, we haven't, we've probably only, only seen each other three times like in the physical so what is it that keeps us close i'll start with you too oh <laughs> why no i'm just so <laughs> no um the thing that keeps us close i think is um yeah me and you were talking about this earlier i love it 
Um, well, my biggest thing is that, uh, I mean, a lot of our characteristics are the same. Like, um, our biggest one is don't waste my time. Like, we're very punctual people. Uh, <laughs> time is very important to us um, because, you know, that's like, I mean, time is everything. Time is money. Time is just time. And it, it's an intangible thing that you can't get back. So I think that time is very, very important to us. I think that's what our glue is. And then I think that because that's one of our biggest characteristics individually, I think that's what brings us together in the sense that we, we would actually, all right, I know, like, we would plan around each other. I'm like, all right, I know I got this. Like, I know Adrian. I know she got school. I know you're doing your executive producer thing. I'm in school and working. So we have to, like, we know each other's schedules. And it's like, I know when to, um, when to say something. Like, even, like, texting last night. I'm like, I know, I, I'm for certain, I'm for certain Adrian ass wasn't up. <laughs> I was not. <laughs> I was for certain she wasn't up, but I didn't care. I just wanted to make sure that even if I text, I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm gonna put this, but it's for the, it's for all of us. But I'm putting in that time, I'm putting in that effort. But I think that's like one of our biggest um things um uh, individually that makes us um so tight and I love it. <laughs> I don't wanna give too much. Go ahead, Adrian. I don't wanna I got more, but <laughs> Um, you, you know, when I was thinking, when this question popped up and I was thinking, I think there's another one that I didn't consciously before you pose this question as something to think about before we came on, we come from families that are really supportive, right? We come from families where support, I think for me, I know support is like a number one thing. Like you show up for people like point blank and period. You may not have the money. You may not even have the time, but you show up. And that's like a family characteristic that I think that all of us had kind of instilled in us as children that you just kind of see grow and look different as you mature. And when I was thinking about it, even like us meeting like all three of us the first time was really from that spirit of support, right? Like it wasn't an arbitrary trip. Yeah, it was fun. It was great. But it was really you all seeing that I needed some support and being able to respond to that. And I think that that understanding of giving people space because support could be, get, you know, backing away, but it could also be leaning in. I think that to me is a really core value that we share together, that we share from a family standpoint as well, that we come from families that value and nurture that. And also we know we have our families to lean on too. Like we don't feel like we're not going to overly need to lean on each other because we have other support systems as well. Like we're not the end all be all to being supportive of each other, but we know we will be, right? Like I know that Chris's mom is gonna always show up for her, you know, the same. And you know, um, Tiff doesn't have her mom, but she still has this great network of family who are still there and supportive. And so I think that that to me is one that we've never even maybe talked about, but I really think shows up in how we just move, right? You know, how we do things, how. Hey, we're busy, but it's like, what y'all doing? Like, we may not get on, or even the fact that we're willing to say, I miss y'all. We ain't we ain't watched this show together. <laughs> we haven't done that. I think that those things are kind of innate to something that probably was nurtured in us before we could talk. No, that's definitely oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Tiff, you mentioned that you weren't gonna give away too much. What were the other things, if you don't mind my asking? I'm curious now. <laughs> Oh, but not, um, oh, um, one, I think that we hold people accountable. I think that we all hold pe different people accountable. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, and we hold each, we hold ourselves accountable, but we do it outside, mm -hmm. um, of our, of our group. Um, that's one. And the other one was, um, oh, I, I gotta, I think it was, uh, I said, uh, it was Tom accountability, reciprocity, and it was, it was another one. And I was like, yeah, this is us. <laughs> I got another, I think another one is we're all very ambitious and organized people. Like when I listen to you all talk about how you move in other spaces, it's actually a relief to see like all of us are like the people people turn to, you know? So I think it's also nice in our friendship 
to be not always have to be that person, right? Like I think each of us at different times in our little trifecta have been that person where, okay, it's time to lean on Tiff, it's time to leave on, lean on Kristen, it's time to lean on Adrian. But I feel like in a lot of our other spaces, that's a constant. Like we're constantly the person people are leaning All the time. on. And so All I think time. that's something that we can relate to and then empathize with when we're not doing, you know, when we don't have to do that. I think that's another one. It's like a shared value. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's definitely a big one for us. It's cool to just hear your perspectives because sometimes things work and people don't take the time to actually think about how it works. Sometimes people look at the stuff that doesn't work and they can pinpoint all the reasons it doesn't work. But I'm like, no, there's a real reason. There's a real reason why our friendship works individually and then also collectively as well. And even the days that they're silence or whatever, reaching out and saying, hey, Adrian, like, how's your day going? What's going on with the kids at the school? Or if Tiff gets quiet, which is rare. So when she does, it's loud. <laughs> like that silence is actually loud to me. So when I'm like, hey, what's going on? What's going on at work? How are you doing? Thank you. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I appreciate that you all check on me as well. And it's not always me being the first one to reach out. I think sometimes in our friendships or relationships, we can be the ones that are the organizers. We talk about this all the time, even with B-sides. You know, we're always the organizers in our lives. And for you all to step in and say, hey, what do you need? Or I'm going to take the initiative. It's like, whoo, OK, great. Um, <laughs> so Adrian, you mentioned something in terms of us all getting together. And I thought this was so cool. Prior to meeting you all, I had never taken a group trip. You know, you know, all these like the movie girls trip or when I see folks that have these brand pictures and they hang out with their friends. I'm like, yeah, my friends do local things or like me and Sabrine have visited family. But I can honestly say I had never taken a big trip with friends and so we had the opportunity of doing that in February 2022, uh, where we visited Adrian and Cayman Islands. Now, why did you all trust that we would have a great time? Why did you even move forward with those plans? Oh, I was um, <laughs> I was just excited to get out the house. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that we would be cool because we meshed so well. And I thought it was just us like... It, it, it wasn't a fact that it was the Cayman Islands. It was just that we're, we were going to see Adrian. And um, I, I think that was, for me, that was, it outweighed the fact that just because she's in the Caymans, um, you know, that was like a, a, a good thing. That was like a second part. But it was just like, oh, I'm meeting you for the first time, Kristen, in person. And it's like, all right, now I can put the, you know, the body. <laughs> to the voice <laughs> and I've already met Adrian because she stayed at you know she came to the house um when she was going back to the Caymans but I just I, I just knew that it was going to be cool because at that time you know a lot of things were transitioning a lot of things happened like my mother passed away your you know your grandmother passed away. It, it was just like a lot of family things and then we we, we got even tighter um so I knew that this was like the perfect trip, the perfect time. I knew that we was going to have a great time. Um, and I just knew, I, I just knew it. I didn't want anyone else on this trip. I just knew it just had to be us three. Like we just had to get this out of our system. <laughs> one thing about me is I'm extremely territorial and I think you guys are similar and also understand. Like, yeah, let's try to bring, I'm like, no, I just want this to be us two. <laughs> Visiting. Maybe next trip. Yeah. <laughs> right. And the funny thing at that time, too, was that we were visiting Adrian to support her, but also I was just ending a really challenging show and wanted to celebrate. And so I just remember that time being amazing. Tiff, we were trying to figure out with Adrian really quickly, like, okay, what weekend can we go? Because that trip really came together within days. So I was like, mm -hmm. what's the mutual time we can all get together? Bet we're going to do it this week and make it work. And so that was just really awesome because I felt like twofold. One, I was able to like take my hat off with you guys, but then we were also able to check on Adrian as well. Um, something you mentioned that I wasn't going to bring up uh, because I think it is so soon. All of us have had really close passings with mothers in our lives. So like you said, Tiff, you lost your mom. Adrian, you lost your grandmother. And I also lost my grandmother. 
Um, what do you feel you have learned most from the relationships that you had or have with them? And how has that sort of inspired you to be even more, I think, communicative inside our friendship? I know like my my grandmother. So like a lot of what we're describing about like who we are as women is really how I would describe my grandmother. Um, very resilient, very like take charge very no nonsense too, which I also think all three of us are, you know, no nonsense, like tell you how it is. Like, it's sometimes I need to be better about how I do it, but you know, it's like, you go know the truth uh, type of thing. But my grandmother to like what we were saying before was just a steady, like when I was putting together her obituary, um, she had all these folders on her computer of pictures and they were all labeled. And she was super organized. Like, I I would love to be her level of organized, um, but she had these folders and I, I looked at my own life through her eyes and it just reminded me how much, sorry, because it's still very fresh for me. She was just always there. You know what I mean? Like whether I was calling her while I was riding my bike, whether I was graduating, whatever it was, she was there. Like that was really important to her. Um, And like I said, like I feel like I said, I feel like it was in our DNA and part of how we stay bonded. Um, Yeah, I'm going to pause there. No, I I understand. Um, You know, my this podcast, I mean, we're taping it prior, but this podcast premieres on Nana's birthday, which is September 7th. And uh, when I think about all of the ways that she is present, but all the ways that she was excited in getting to know you all, Adrian, you were the last friend voice I think she heard. You know, so when we were in, (laughs) when I was in Georgia for the July 4th holiday, I was introducing her to Clubhouse. And I remember I did a welcome Nana room Mm -hmm. You were in with Dre and just chatting with her. And she was so excited. She was always really excited to get to know my friends. I mean, the number one thing that my friends always have said is like, Nana is going to add me as a Facebook friend. She's going to follow me. She's going to comment. (laughs) And then, you know, the very last time that she was in B-Side, she came up to vote. And so it always turns out to me. Yeah. And then fast forward to last year, her first birthday, her first heavenly birthday, Adrian and I battled and we had our family battle Mm -hmm. and a bunch of family members in and out. And also the fact that we were able to play songs that were significant to us and our families and then play songs that were significant to the families of our other B-side members. And that to me is so special because those things have been ingrained in us, but they also, it's just amazing even in us transitioning and understanding that now our family are like angels and ancestors, that they still live on through us in different ways. And in how we connect with loved ones, how we share with ourselves, how we're able to do special things that are inspired by them. And so, yeah, that wasn't even something that I had even like thought to even mention on the podcast, but it's so present to me today. Uh, and it's so present in general because I'm sure all of our mothers <laughs> are happy that we have one another, you know, in our times of transition. So, you know, thank you um, for sharing that, Adrian. Yeah, like my mom, like she will still ask me because she thinks of you all as Zoom friends, like not Clubhouse, <laughs> which is because you remember there was this period where we would get on and we would be on Zoom for hours playing spades, you know, yeah. just shooting the breeze. And sometimes I would be with my mom, like, you know, like, and we would go walking or bike riding. I was like, wait, Ma, we got to get on. And so I, and my mom has spoken to you all. And I, I remember how excited she was when you all were coming to visit because as easy of a transition as the Cayman Islands was, it was coming off of a really rough part of my life that I didn't fully know was so tough for me. Like, you know, like when you're going through it and you're surviving it, you kind of know, but when you get to the other side of it and you look back, you go, wow, like Mm -hmm. 
I was not happy. I was not, you know, like all of those things, whether it were financially things that were going on, like career, it was just, it was a big shift. And almost coming here was such a, a God's gift to me that that was also even difficult. Like, cause it was so much turmoil for like 18 months. It just felt like something was always going on. I was always having to persevere through something. So it was so, such a gift to have you all come. And I look back at like your timing and like how soon after that I was able to kind of actually be a little bit more whole here, you know, and I think you all coming really was part of that being able to like venture out and do things. And not not that I didn't, right. I'm not saying like, y'all know I wasn't like a homebody, but there was definitely something different about my own energy and spirit when people are willing to pick up and come to a different country because you need them like that. Like that was something very touching and there's no way in words I can ever thank you all for like doing that. Like, which is why when y'all got here, I was like, what do y'all want? Like, I still have trail mix here. Like because of Kristen, <laughs> I still have Tito's here because of Tim. Like, you know, like. Look, no, your screwball is still here at my house. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we'll be back in the Caymans <laughs> soon to come. Yep. And actually across, like if you, if you turn this camera, the rocks that I picked up when we went to the beach are in a jar. And I always want to make sure to keep that jar. It's just so, you know what I put your rock, I put your rock on my, um, my ancestors pedestal where my, where my mother's sitting. Mm -hmm. And then my best friend, she gave me the sage and I have their rock on top of that. Like that's like in my little, you know, ancestral shrine. That area. Is awesome. That is so so awesome. Man, those are that's great. I love you guys so much. <laughs> so, much so much. So much. And it it's it's like, you know, people have talked about oh making friends like digitally. Like like I said, COVID was it was nothing pretty, but there are some gifts and you all are two gifts that I don't think had the pandemic not happened, your gifts that I can't imagine like now. To tell me I'm not gonna have Tiff and Kristen is like blasphemous. Like what? No, yeah. they stuck. Like I will say, y'all stuck with me. I don't care. Like y'all, <laughs> we in this. Like we are the silver lining. This is the yeah. silver lining. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We are. Um, one thing that stands out from the trip is so you know Adrian had this full itinerary planned. We all were able to contribute, but we were going to do and I forget what it's called. Was it the luminescence tour? bioluminescent so <laughs> so we had to get like i'm saying this wrong but like scuba gear we basically had to get like body suits and fins and things like that and i'm thinking like okay this would be cool in the backdrop i am kind of thinking about the fact that i don't swim much and i said to them hey like i don't swim a whole lot but i'm i'm gonna go for it child we got in that water and we're <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> don't touch the bottom don't touch our, the bottom <laughs> yes so our instructor said we cannot touch the bottom of the water mind you the water is like four or five feet i'm five nine so obviously like i'll be okay but i got in that water and i froze and i stayed by those steps and adrian and tiff were like chris where are you chris i'm like i'm over here, I'm over here. <laughs> yeah. it felt like marco polo in the water <laughs> <laughs> and tiff came back and she's, she hung out next to me. Now, she wasn't going to make me feel bad. Like, you can't swim or because I, I can't swim. Like, anything like that. But when she did that, I was like, oh, man, I, I trust both of these ladies because Adrian just wanted to know where we were. And Tiff was like, I'm going to make sure Chris is all right because I stuck, I stuck to those stairs. I did not move. <laughs> I was talking to somebody. I looked. I was like. Oh, you not hurt. I was like, oh, wait, let's, <laughs> let's go back. I was like, where are my actual people? I'm in, engaging with because everybody has on these wetsuits and mm -hmm. goggles and everything. So, like, people look the same. You're not really fully talking. So, yeah, it's I dark. Just, it was dark. It's super dark. And all you see is lights in the water. So, I thought this whole time, I was like, oh, shoot. It was like, Tiffany, Kristen, we out at? We like, we over here. <laughs> Y'all okay? Yeah, we good. Um, we good. That was so significant <laughs> to me, though, because it made me feel safe in a moment where I was definitely not comfortable. And I really, really appreciate that 
appreciated it in the moment and still appreciate that, that I can be myself and say, hey, y'all, like, I'm not going to continue on. And it's cool, but also, like, we're going to watch out for you, too. So that was just such a huge moment for me in that in that trip. So I can't wait until we do our next trip. Adrian mentioned this a little bit about romantic relationships and just connecting abroad and things of that nature. Now, Tiff, you're married and Adrian and I are single. Um, Adrian, since you are mostly abroad, like how has it been dating internationally a long distance? What have you learned about yourself specifically in dating? Well, Tiff was uh, low key counseling me or listening to me <laughs> counsel myself <laughs> this morning. I was um, counseling y'all. <laughs> Got single shenanigans. <laughs> uh, very much so. Uh, which is actually, I just want to know, I want to name that it's not often that you can have this type of a friendship where two people are single and one is married and it not miss a beat. You know, a lot of times single people want to do single stuff and married people want to do married stuff and it makes it can make it difficult. So I want to name, Tip. I really appreciate that you're able to still really fully be present, although you're married. Terrence is the brother of the relationship. Like, I just, I want to name that because it, it is rare that that happens in such a seamless way, particularly with a new friendship. So I do want to mm -hmm. say that. Um, what have I learned about myself in dating? Um, so before I came to the Cayman Islands, I really only still dated Americans when I was abroad because I try and I got frustrated by the cultural differences with some of the people. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to stick to the black men I know. I know how they function. I know how they operate. And so this is the first time where like I expanded that. And so I've learned that time is something that um, is really big to me in a way that I knew, but was real firm because, you know, everything operates on island time here. And y'all think CPT is something? <laughs> Woo wee. <laughs> When I'm telling you like an hour and a half late is normal, that was really difficult um, because I, I perceive value around how you value my time and kind of like moving away from those being so closely associated um, is, is a growth area and something that I'm working on. I've also learned dating older as well, because I think some of it's abroad, but some of it's just as you get older and you understand and yourself a lot clearer and um whatnot that one thing I've learned is that I can because I'm so much a person who thinks from here to like here you know like I'm constantly kind of like thinking ahead and using the data of what I've experienced to kind of forecast what's going to happen sometimes I worry about things that I really need to just let go you know what I mean and say okay Adrian that's really either that's a problem you've almost created in your head that's really not an issue or as much as I hold people accountable, holding the people you care about most accountable seems is always the hardest. You know what I mean? Like it's much easier for me to hold somebody accountable at work than it is to like call my mom and say something hurt me. You know what I mean? Like those two two things. And so the same kind of comes up in my dating relationships. But I think back to even our relationship and even a few others that I have where I feel like those people I'm really close to. At some point, my, myself or the other person has said something about where they haven't shown up or where they were disappointed or where they were hurt. And I actually feel like that has always moved me closer to those people instead of further away. Mm -hmm. And so when I remind myself having hard conversations is one part of any relationship, they're going to happen. But Adrian, there's so much data that shows you that those things can actually help you in that relationship become closer and stronger for it. Um, and so I think that's probably some, and I, I don't know if that's abroad and I don't know, or if that's just time or circumstances, but I definitely think that's the area I've grown in and learned the most about myself. It's just that communication and that patience. Um, you know, it's interesting when I think about just the types of conversations that we all have individually, but also collectively, we all come from different experiences. So I can definitely, you know, I empathize with a lot of what Adrienne goes through. I feel like she and I go through a lot of similar experiences when it comes to dating. But then also, Tiff, you've also been like extremely transparent about 
your dating experiences and also getting married later in life, uh, which in the event I get married, I'll be following that same trend. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with it, you know. <laughs> what do you feel like you've learned about yourself through marriage? Curious, like when you decided, like that this was the one and this was it and, and what you've learned about yourself and in, in this marriage process and journey for you. Oh, um, well, first of all, it took me a while to even, even think about marriage. It's going to be a while to get to that point. I was definitely on the career. Um, just my career. Um, and, and the happenstance in that was that me and, uh, Terrence, my husband, uh, we were actually best friends first. So, but other people seen it. I didn't knew we didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. He probably seen it. But um, but it kind of like um it definitely opened up my mind to to being um a part of something, I guess in a partnership. Cause like I told y'all before, I like going to the movies by my I like doing stuff by myself. Um and I feel like I, a lot of, and then um, it kind of go, also goes back to what you were talking about, Krista, or Adrian, I don't know, if you, um, like how we're known as the, I, I pretty much the caregivers of our family, like everybody relies on us and stuff like that. So I've always been by myself. Um, I've always learned to th- do things by myself, but, um, but just transitioning over to a wife, um, it didn't really change a lot. I still feel like I could do things by myself, but I don't feel like I like everything like is such a burden because now I have a partner like I don't have to do things by myself. Like I don't have to pay the light bill by myself. I don't have to pay rent by myself. Like I have a partner that could contribute, so a lot of that load is 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 off of me cuz I I think maybe in my early 30s, late 20s, I always felt like, you know, like I could do this pretty much what I was just saying. I, I could do everything by myself. But then um, but then once you get a partner, it's like it kind of like opened up my eyes. I'm like, I don't have to stress over being a sole person or the breadwinner, or you know, like I have someone to do this with, I have someone to go through life with. And that kind of like changed my views. Like I don't have to go to the movies by myself. I have like he enjoys movies just as much as me. He likes to get there early like me. You know, it's it's, it's just like the little things. Um, I don't have to go out to eat by myself. I'm not I'm not going out to eat. I can, but I would I would rather do it with him. And another thing <laughs> about this is that, man people be thinking like it's just like all about love like you gotta like the person also like people think it's like oh I'm just so in love I'm like well do you even like being around this person too because after all that or after all the aesthetic is like man I don't even like you have to enjoy being around that person like you know we have our like our little inside jokes and stuff we even got a we even got a handshake people don't know that we got a handshake you know it's just like the little nuances of of uh of a relationship. So Tiff, when you hear Adrian and I talking about our dating stories, like what do you what do you think? I have I have a follow-up already, like a follow-up question already. Cause I want to know how you recognize that Terrence was your husband. But like when you hear us and you kind of just like, yo, this is some rigmarole next, like get them out. <laughs> <laughs> yo, y'all swear y'all make me laugh with y'all dating life all the time. Because I've I've been through every, I've been everything that y'all going through I've probably I've probably um been through that and probably more um even like to the point where I had a stalker like I had to get a restraining order somebody threw a rock through my window it's crazy but um like even to that you know it's like all sides of the spectrum so every time y'all bring up these different scenarios and instances in y'all dating life I'm like okay well I can relate and if I can't relate I'll just shut up and listen. <laughs> you know, but, and I, you know, and I, I just, you know, I, I don't, and it, I really don't like giving, giving um advice because, you know, we're all different. And then when you're put in that instance, 
like if if I if you tell me that you've done something or something is going on in your daily life and I'm like, oh, well, I, I can say, yeah, well, I've been through that. This is what I've done. You might not react the same way. I'm not expecting you to react the same way. And I can't tell you if it's right or wrong. You know what I'm saying? All I got to do is just be there, be a friend and be like, hey, well, you know, well, I can see I like I understand your side, but I also understand their side because, mm-hmm. you know, there's your side, there's their side and it's the truth. Adrian, so, um, you know. <laughs> during, I think this might have been the week you went back to Cayman Islands. Tiff and I were talking last week and I was like, man, this is actually the podcast. But we were talking about my silent list because I don't believe I have a list. Uh, we were talking and I just happened to be like, I don't like chest tattoos and I don't like. <laughs> oh, I remember this. I remember this. And I was like going on and, and you know, Men with kids and more than one child. I'll say for that unicorn, yo, the unicorn. Yeah, I was listening. <laughs> I said, "Who? Where is this person? This person is human." Like Tiff goes, unicorn. Tiff goes. Well, you know, you may need to expand, but I mean, if that's where you are, then then that's okay. And and I was just like on a roll, <laughs> and, she, and she was like, "So you just looking okay?" Because she because she's like. You might want to, and then she kind of paused because she wasn't trying to say change, but she was trying to say like, well, you were you were trying to get me to open up my perspective a bit, I think. But yeah, don't change. Just you want to acknowledge acknowledge what your requests are. That was definitely because yeah. <laughs> I remember I was listening because I feel like all three of us were on the phone because I remember this because Tim had asked you, well, "Do you have a list?" and you were like, "Well, no." You were like, no. But yeah, you got a list. But I thought in my head, I said, she got a list because I hear the list. Maybe she ain't wrote down the list, but you have a list. You have when a list. You start, when you started listing stuff, I was like, well, some of it are things I never even thought about if I care. Like the chest tattoos, I was like, oh. What? You wouldn't even know unless you in that <laughs> circumstance. It's like, I really don't like that. And then it's like, you have a way of being critical and you don't know, you don't even think that you're being critical to where it's like, yo, you really being critical. You might want to just open it up just a little bit more. <laughs> just a tad bit. Just give me one. All right, what if he had one tattoo right here? <laughs> just open it up. What if he can be covered when he's at work? Is that okay now? I know. What if he wore turtlenecks and jackets? <laughs> like, would that be okay? <laughs> and he's probably like the best. He's probably like the best dude ever. I thought I'm thinking about it. I am thinking about it. So, Chris, you know, Chris I remember. But don't change, y'all. Do you all remember Chris telling us the story about dancing with a child? That that's actually stuck out yes. in my mind as one thinking about because we Chris and I both don't have kids, and, and I will openly admit having kids sometimes scares. Like the thought of having kids sometimes <laughs> like scares me. It's like, and I think I would be a fantastic mother, but. But that the fact that I would be a mother is like, ooh, that's a lot. Um, and I remember, and I bring this up because I remember how happy you were about, and it wasn't even somebody you were dating. It was like a random person mm-hmm. at a festival's child that you were dancing with, who you just connected with. But ever since you shared that, I've consciously thought about like, how do I nurture thinking? Because I always date men with children. Like I, it's a normal thing for me. I actually, I've said this before. If you 35 and you've never, you know, 35 plus almost 40, you've never been married and never had no kids. I I tend to think there's a way back there. Like, ain't nobody wanted to make something permanent with you ever. ever. Some, some is up. So I tend to date men with kids. I had a friend who told me years ago that you can see the type of father a man's gonna be by seeing him actually be a father. And so I, from when Kristen shared that story, now I consciously think about even not just seeing how he would be as a father, but like, how would I show up as like somebody who's also partnering in, you know, the raising of a child? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, um, that, that moment was really significant. I feel like I've had quite a few moments recently in 2022 that have shown different sides of me, but just to give a little bit more inside scoop, I was at Solnick, which is a really great one day festival here in LA. And I was hanging out with someone 
again, someone I don't even know was like a friend of a friend. They happen to just have some space like, hey, you want to put your blanket down here? Great. And this guy had a two year old who just we just seemed really drawn to each other. This little kid, this little young man, this little boy was just like scooting over next to me and wanting to play. And I was just all into it. And so I ended up dancing with the little boy like on the dance floor and taking him to get water and whatnot. But at a point, his father and I were dancing and the father had his son in his arms and I'm dancing with him. And we're like, clo- we're like dancing, dancing. I was like, oh, this is really nice. Like I would like to do this. And then also, <laughs> you know, at a point he gave the baby back to me and then I was still dancing just as hard as I would if I were by myself, I was dancing, but that actually rocked him to sleep. So I had him and I, my hair was sweating out and I just, Move my hair so my hair wouldn't sweat out. I was just patting the baby. And I was like, wow, I really want to be a mother. And I had thought about that before. But like in that moment, I always thought that motherhood strips you of not only your independence, but your fun and being able to be spunky and sexy and all of those things. And that moment, and obviously I know that there are hard times as a mother as well. So I'm not, but in that moment, I just felt like, wow, this is something that not only I can do, but I would like to do. Um, So we've talked about a lot inside of our friendship in terms of who we are as individuals and who we are collectively, but we haven't talked a whole lot about what we do, where we are. And so I just want to find out a little bit more. So what do you believe your magic is? And we can also comment on what we feel each other's magic is, but what do you feel your magic is? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I never even uh, really thought about that. But um, I feel that my magic is uh, giving. I give a lot in terms of, it doesn't necessarily have to be monetary. As a matter of fact, it could be monetary too. I'm, I don't even know why I'm even let, not letting my light shine. It, it's everything, any any type any any type of giving. Like I'm always I'm always there. Um, like my not only my friends rely on me. Uh, of course my my daughter. Um, uh, but my you know my family. Um, like a lot of people rely on me. It's work, coworkers. A lot of people rely on me, and I don't think I um. A lot of times I don't even think I stop to even realize how much they rely on me. And I think I dim my own light um, to my importance. Uh, but that's my magic. In terms, of even, in terms of even acknowledging that for yourself, how would you honor your magic? Number one, continuing to do it. And then actually, number two, taking the time to stop and be like, just have self-awareness that people do need me. I think one of my biggest fears is is feeling as if no one needs me. So just acknowledging people need me. And also that you're a blessing. No matter if you're giving or you being fun and joking, you don't have to give all the time. <laughs> you can just simply be, you know, I think that mm-hmm. you have such a great presence that's unique to you. There's no one else that I know that's like you. And just being able to (laughs) just being able to call that out and recognize that and also give yourself some self-care because sure, I think that's awesome, you know, that you're giving, but also just making sure that you give to yourself too and you allow others to give to you. I would add that I think a magic that Tiff has is there there's a sense of calmness that you always have, no matter what mayhem, no matter what's going on. And I, I mean that very deeply. There's a way that you can, like, even how, like, the example Tiff, get, not Tiff, Kristen gave about, like, how you challenged her, it's in a very calm way. It's not like, well, sis, have you thought about this? It's like, hmm, so what's this list? Tell me about mm-hmm. it. What's on it? And have you really, can, it, there's just a calm spirit that you have about how you go about everything, whether it's a buildings on fire, I feel like you're going to get everybody out the building. And I won't even know that you broke a sweat because that's how calm you're going to be about it. So I think that's also a, a spirit that I know I don't have that I think I see it as your magic because it's something I kind of wish I could do a little bit better. Oh, I love y'all. <laughs> I love y'all. 
Tiff is so calm that even seeing her wipe her eyes in the few times that she has, <laughs> has really moved me. <laughs> you know, and like, not because I'm like, do I follow up or do I just let them, I'm like, I'm going to just let the moment be the moment. But I so appreciate you and, um, and just who you are. And just the fact that we all have been through so much and have been through a lot this year and have continued to weather the storms and have continued to still be calm and show up for each other. That's something I definitely really appreciate. Yeah. Uh, I love y'all. <laughs> I love y'all too. I love you. Uh, so moving on to Adrian. Adrian, what do you feel your magic is? So I, I like to say there's two, um, but one kind of comes from the other. Yeah, I'm claiming two pieces of magic. Uh, but I show up as my full self in every place that I go. Like I, I, that I think is like something very magical about me that I think comes through on screens. It comes through on Clubhouse. It comes through when I go walking. That I am very comfortable with who Adrian is for the for the from the rooter to the tutor. You know the good, the bad. You know all of it. I really own this is me and kind of accepted a take it or leave it approach about who I am. Cause I know I am special. I think that is one piece of magic, but that then leads to the other one that I think other people really see is that I'm able to do the same for others. Like I really on a regular basis am helping people to do the same for themselves to like, no, no sis, you want this, this is what you want. Like, and go for it. Or helping them to see some of their magic and be like, you do know that this is something you're really great at, right? You know, and how are you showing it? And it, it shows up in like the business that I run is all around that, you know, this idea that I trust myself so much and think I'm great and amazing that you should do the same. How can I help you on that journey? And I feel like, although those are two different things, I think without having the first one, the second one isn't even possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's good. I was gonna say that for you. Um, um, you have like this really. I think, I, I think we all have it, but your your light just shines so bright. Like you have this really big command presence. It's like you the tiniest little, the tiniest person in the room, but your light is so like you're so bright. And it's like, you, you just have like this command about you. Like if you walk into a room, like you're like eight feet tall. I feel like you're like eight feet tall. Like your voice is so, it's just so, it's, it's just so great. It's just like a command thing. And I love that, especially for black women. I think a lot of times we don't, um, we, we, we always have to work. You know what they say? We always got to work like 10 times harder and stuff like that. But I feel like, Adrian, when you come into a room, I feel like you only got to work two times. It's hard. You ain't even got to do much. You know what I'm saying? You just like, this is it. That, you know? And then people gravitate towards that. Like, you're like a natural born leader. I think that's like the biggest thing. Like, that's your magic. Like, you're like a natural born leader. Like, a lot of people don't have that. People go to school to learn how to, how to do what you, like, be who you are. Yeah. And that's crazy. I love it. I would say for Adrian, it's a combination of the two being com like being able to have command of a room, but also being compassionate as well. There's always an empathetic place that you come from in terms of trying to understand a situation or a person and look at the bigger picture before even um, coming to a conclusion about something. I feel like you're really a deep thinker in that way and very um I think just very connected to any situations that you're a part of, whether it's personal or professional, you're always um, exploring that other side. And that just to me makes you super special and super unique because so many um, don't even think about that. And so that makes you great in friendships. And that also makes you great with kids as an assistant principal doing what you do with your business. It all comes together and it all connects like pretty seamlessly to the point where even it was funny when you went back to the Cayman Islands a couple of weeks ago, I was like, man, I really want Adrian to get some rest. I don't know when that's going to be, but I really want her to get some rest because it's easy, well, not easy, but I think it's natural for you to have all of those different dynamics to your personality, but still being able to recharge is like really important. I, I want that for you. Um, 
So I'm saying that in this moment, but I just love the fact that you are bold and brilliant and beautiful in all spaces. So that's what I feel uh, your magic is. <laughs> Thank you both. That means a lot. <laughs> we love you, girl. So, so you're going to share yours, right? What, what's your magic? Or is that only a special right. episode? Like... <laughs> <laughs> no, that was only going to be if y'all asked. <laughs> so, oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm like, asking. we got something to say. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm asking too. <laughs> so I want to be able to tell you what I also think, but I want to hear from you first. Sure. <laughs> so what I feel my magic is, is being able to bring people together and rally people. I absolutely love community and that's inside every single space. It's funny, even in leading the team that, I, that I'm that i leading right now, I really take pride in hosting game nights and doing one-on-one -on -one check-ins and making sure that everyone feels valued. And so that's something that I feel my magic is just in terms of like making sure people feel comfortable and feel a part and feel included and I think a lot of that goes back to even some of the things I was sharing about moving around a lot, you know, becoming a pen pal at six and seven years old to the point where my friend's parents felt bad that their kids weren't writing. So they would write to me just to make sure that I would stay. That's really true to make sure that we would stay connected because I was the one thinking like, I want to create community. I did, it doesn't look like that at six and seven, but I was looking mm -hmm. to build friendships then. And so I feel like those things to, you know, having dance parties and inviting people out, having game nights, having Zoom parties, doing what we do at B-Sides, I think that that's something that um, I would say uh, is my magic. I would even say, and I kind of talked about it earlier because I, I completely agree with that, hands down, no question to that. But, you know, we... we we coined you refund queen, but I think that, <laughs> that we did because Kristen will get a refund from anything. Yes. But what I think that's really a representation of is your willingness to confront anything, like a willingness to confront anything yes. difficult to anybody and really own and command what you deserve. Like, I think even like the trust your magic is magic itself, that, that you're willing to actually do that and then yes. and to look for that with other people. But I, like I said, I remember when you were like, hey, I feel like y'all let me down here. And not only did you share it, but when I pushed back, you were open to receiving it. Because I was like, I hear you. And I think that there's some very much valid in what you're saying. But here's another perspective to kind of consider. You are willing to do that. And I feel like not a lot of people will do both ends. They'll challenge, but not not listen to like where they might have some, you know, responsibility in what they're, you know, challenging others. And I think that's an amazing skill that I wish I'm like, man, how much more money would I have in my bank account if I were like Kristen? <laughs> like if I were like Kristen, I feel Word. like I would have a few more dollars in my bank account. <laughs> Were that, and it also goes back to your big. I think is one of your biggest magic. It all ties in is that you are probably one of the best communicators I know. Like you do, I know people have been like you. I'm pretty sure you know in like introduction into communication, they give you like that chart, the circle chart, and it's like, all right, first you gotta listen, then you re the receiver re does this, and it, you know, <laughs> you actually go through all those steps. I'm like, yo, she. I was like, there is no way that she is following these steps, but you actually take the time to go through that full that full communication process. And like, like I said, like you are probably the best communicator I know. Like you actually, you, you give feedback, you receive it, you don't criticize, you don't, you know, it's, um, when you give it, it's articulate, it makes sense. Um, it, it's like everything, it, it just amazes me. I'm like, man, I want to be like Kristen when I grow up, when it comes to communicating <laughs> to people. <laughs> Yeah. sometimes because I think you I mean even in I mean in, in all in all forms talking like verbal write type writing especially I think you're such an excellent writer I'm like yeah this is a like remember we were talking about one of our friends the other day and I was just like yeah and I was just gave you a voice I'm like yeah you know I was like I think the note should be something like this and I just gave you like three points and then you came back with like this whole thing and I was like <laughs> yeah that's how I would say it <laughs> this is perfect I was like yeah you got to make the person feel like this but don't it and then you came back with something I was like you came back with something 20 minutes I was like 
yeah that's exactly i was like oh, but but with what you wrote i would not have thought of writing it like it would probably take me longer to write it like that but you came back with it so quick because i was like i think that is like your big like you're such a great communicator so that bleeds into everything else that that's your magic like that bleeds into you building a community you keeping in contact with people and and stuff like that and being the refund queen <laughs> Like baby, my money, you know. <laughs> like it bleeds and all that, but that that's like your biggest thing. I'm, I just, I'm, it just amazes me how great of a communicator you are. Because people talk about communication all the time, but they don't actually do it. But you do it. Like you, you're like a walking communicator. <laughs> I love that about you. Thank you so much for that. I received that. I, I really, really appreciate that. And I. I won't say work hard, but I'm very conscious about communication. It is really important to me. It's make, it's trying to speak to people's listening and then also making sure that I'm still making my points clear, whether I need to address something that is not so great and then something that's great. So I definitely appreciate that for sure. Ladies, this has been such a pleasure to talk with you both. You know, when I think about Trust Your Magic, you all are the two that I call when I need a boost, when I need a reminder about my magic. And I hope that it's the same with you all. And I love you immensely. And thank you for joining us. So one thing, can you let me know, (laughs) can you let everybody know where they can find you online? You can find me online at Tiffany Kelly. My face is on there because it's like 500,000 Tiffany Kelly's (laughs) Facebook or at Tiffany Me Kelly on Instagram. Um, best way to find me is Worldwide Educator, um, worldwideeducator.org, my website. You can connect, book time with me if that's something you're interested in. You can find me on Instagram, Worldwide Educator, one word. I mean, the other platforms, I'm on uh, LinkedIn, Adrian Waller. I think there's some Worldwide Educator thing linked there. And then on Instagram, because Worldwide Educator is too long, Spell educator with an eight as the part that says eight in the name. So, yes, I also joined AMP, but I haven't used it under Worldwide Educator with the eight. There you go. <laughs> All the socials. Yeah, you hit Adrian wherever you are. Uh, but ladies, thank you so much for your time. Also, thank you all so much for checking out Trust Your Magic podcast. You can find us, like or subscribe, and we will see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye. <laughs> Bye.